As we start our unit on circles, first we need to take a moment and cover some vocabulary. Here's some of the most important vocabulary, uh, vocabulary right now. Of course, you got the definition of a circle, which is the set of all points in a plane that are equidistant, uh, meaning equally distant, from a given point called the center. All right, a radius is a segment whose endpoints are the center and any point on the circle. So, for example, this is an example of a radius. A chord is a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. So, here's a point on the circle, here's another point on the circle. So, a segment like this is called a chord. A diameter is a chord that contains the center of the circle. All right, so if I go from one side of the circle to the other and I pass through the center, that is a diameter. A secant is a line that intersects the circle in two points. So the difference between a secant and a chord is a chord is a segment. It, it has an end point and another end point. Uh, whereas a line, of course, goes forever in both directions. Okay, and then we have the concept of a tangent. A tangent is a line, or it could be a segment or a ray, that uh, intersects the circle at just a single point. So it just glances off, it just barely touches the circle. If you have two circles, you can have a common tangent, um, either a common internal tangent, if it passes between the circles and it touches each circle once, or you could have a common external tangent if it uh, touches both circles on the outside without passing between. All right, so look at each one of these figures and decide if it is best described as a radius, a chord, a diameter, a secant, or a tangent of circle C. Segment DF, by the way, that symbol over the top is the segment symbol, as opposed to if you look at part E that has a little tiny line over it with the double arrows, that's a symbol for a line. And F with that little arrow, that's a ray. Okay, so anyway, segment DF. That means it's, it's a segment that uh, has endpoints D and F like this. So that is a chord uh, because it begins and ends on the circle. Okay, if it passed through the center, it would be called a diameter. Anyway, what about segment AB? So we see segment AB right here. All right, notice segment AB just uh, skims across the circle, only touching one point. That is a tangent. Okay, how about segment CE? All right, here's C and here is E. Segment CE then is a radius. Uh, because it goes from the center out to the circle, that makes it a radius. All right, what about segment DE? So here's D, here's E, here's segment DE. That is a, a diameter. It is a chord that passes through the center. So that is called a diameter. Okay, what about line AG? All right, notice the line symbol over it. Okay, so here's point A and here's point G. And so this is line AG. That is going to be a secant. All right, remember that a secant, if I can move this, is a line that passes through the circle uh, intersecting two points. And that's what this is doing. It's a line that is cutting across the circle, intersecting here and here. That makes it a secant. All right, what about ray EB? 
ray EB starts at E, passes through B. That's ray EB. This is also going to be another tangent. So you're going to see that a tangent could be a line or a segment or a ray. Uh, it's touching only at one point. That makes it a tangent. Now number two, draw a circle P. And then we're supposed to do some other stuff. But So let's start by drawing circle P. All right, circle P means a circle that has center P. So here's the center, and we'll call it P. Now we're supposed to draw a tangent ray, CD, on the circle. Okay, so if it's a tangent ray, that means it has to just intersect the circle at a single point. So here is a ray. Okay, so if this is point C and this is point D, then that would make this ray CD. Okay, now we're supposed to draw a circle Q. So circle Q is just a circle with the center point Q. Now we need to draw a secant line on the circle and label it EF. So a secant line is going to be a full line that passes through the circle and it's going to intersect at two points. Since I need it to intersect at two points, I might as well pick those points to be E and F. Okay. Um, well, come to think of it, they keep telling me to label it with these symbols. So maybe I should do that. Um, so, I mean, I put the points on here, but maybe I should go ahead and, and put line EF like this. And back on number two, I was supposed to label it um, ray CD. So maybe I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, what's next? Draw a circle R. Okay, so here comes circle R. It's just a circle with center R. Now we need to draw a chord on the circle and label it segment GH. All right, so a chord begins and ends on the circle. So I might as well call this G and call this H. All right, that would make this segment GH. All right, but in addition to that, maybe they want me to label it like this. Okay, state the best term for the figure in the diagram. All right, so we're doing the same thing as above, just picking, uh, picking the terminology. Okay, point F. Point F is right here. That is a point of tangency. Okay, there's a tangent line that just barely touches at this point. That makes it a point of tangency. All right, line FE. So there's F, here's E. So this is line FE. Okay, that is not only a tangent line, but it's a common tangent line because it's a tangent to both of these circles. And I can be even more specific and call it a common internal tangent because of the way it passes between the circles. Okay, segment HG.
All right, here's H, here's G, here is segment HG. That is a radius. It goes from the center out to the edge of the circle. That is a radius. Segment DB. So here's uh, B, here's D, here is segment DB. That is a chord. A chord is a segment that begins and ends on the circle. <clears throat> what about point C? Point C is the center of the circle. So point C is a center. Okay, how about segment BE? All right, so here's B, here's E. Here comes segment BE. Well, that's a diameter. A diameter is a chord that passes through the center of the circle. What about line DB? So again, here's B, here's D. Line BD is this. All right, this is going to be a secant. All right, remember, the only difference between a chord and a secant is that a chord is a segment that it begins and ends on the circle. A secant is a line. It passes straight through the circle and keeps going in both directions. So this is a line. OK, see the line symbol? It's a line. It keeps going forever. That makes it a secant. OK, line AG. See the line symbol? Line AG. So here's A, here's G. So this is line AG. All right, this is a tangent line, but it's tangent to both circles, so that makes it a common tangent. And it is external. It does not pass between the circles. It stays on the outside. So that makes this a common external tangent. Okay, determine whether the given arc is minor arc, is a minor arc, major arc, or a semicircle. Okay, so of course a semicircle is going to be an arc that is 180 degrees. Semi means half, so a semicircle would be half a circle. So that is a semicircle. Okay, um, so you know technically the semicircle does not include the diameter. All right, this arc is a semicircle. Anything larger than a semicircle is going to be a major arc. Anything smaller than a semicircle is going to be a minor arc. OK, so let's look at arc AB. Um, by the way, it could be a little ambiguous. Um, if I say arc AB, that means it goes from A to B, and it's part of the circle. Um, but you might wonder, wait a minute, I could go from A to B this way. Or there's nothing to stop me from going the long way. Couldn't I go from A to B by going around the circle like this? So maybe this is circle, uh, arc AB, as uh, shown here in pink. Well, it turns out um, if we only have two letters, we are supposed to assume that it is the minor arc, the short way. Um, if you want to name the major arc, you have to use three letters. So the only ones that have a shot at being major arcs are these ones that have three letters. 
Just because you have three letters doesn't automatically make you a major arc. If I said, hey everybody, look at arc uh, ABC. Okay, ABC. That means it, it goes through A, B, and C in that order. So if I started at A and I passed through B and I went to C, look, that's arc ABC. But it's still a minor arc, it's still less than 180. Okay, so right away we know that arc AB is going to be uh, minor. Uh, we know that arc AE -E is also going to be a minor arc. Let me not be lazy. I'll go ahead and put the word arc on the end of here. Okay, because it's the two-letter designation, so we have no choice. So arc AB was like this, and arc AE was like that. All right, both minor arcs. Now, let's talk about arc EAC possibly uh, a semicircle or a major arc. All right, EAC goes from E to A to C in that order. So E to A to C. Well, hopefully you can see that that is a semicircle. It's a half circle. You can tell because uh, here's a diameter right here. Um, that makes this half a circle, semicircle. All right, what about ACD? A to C to D. So here we go, from A through C before arriving at D. All right, now that is a major arc. Clearly it is uh, greater than 180 degrees. CAD, from C to A to D. That is another major arc. DEB, so from D to E to B. All right, that is a semicircle. Hopefully you can see the diameter that's right here passing through the center. All right, if that's a diameter, that makes this a semicircle. Okay. Uh, number 19 is arc BAE. Arc bay, if you will. Um, so B, A, E. Well, even though that's three letters, notice that that is a minor arc. All right, it's clearly less than 180 degrees. All right, what about arc D, E, C? All right, so from D, through E on its way to C. That is a major arc. It is bigger than 180 degrees. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.